Alright, in this video we're going to be taking a look at the show MIDI panel area in Scratch Live. This is what you're going to use to assign most of the more commonly used things like scrolling and loading through tracks, uh, cue points, instant doubling, auto loops, and loop rolls. Uh, so let's just dig right into it. Now to scroll through your crates and your track listing, you're going to want to assign this knob right here in the middle. Uh, so make sure you're in MIDI assign learn mode and click on the show MIDI panel. And we're going to assign this knob right here in the middle to our MIDI controller. So just click it and then move your knob on your MIDI controller. Now you can either use an absolute knob or more than likely your MIDI controller will have a endless rotary type encoder knob, uh, which is uh, what I'm using right now. Now to cycle between the absolute and the relative encoding types, you need to hit the C key on your keyboard and then you'll see that change it to relative sign bit and just keep pressing it uh, relative binary offset, two's complement on off and then back to absolute. So if you're using absolute lab, uh, just leave it like that. If you're using any type of relative encoder or endless rotary, uh, make sure you try each one of these out. Uh, every controller is different, so you might have to you know, play around with it to figure out which one uh, works best for you. However, mine, I'm using the Range 62 right now, so uh, we're going to use uh, binary offset is what it uses. Now, to toggle between the crate area, as you can see, it's scrolling over here, so how do we get over to the track listing area over here? Uh, well, the keyboard shortcut for that is the tab key on your keyboard. Uh, so you're going to want to side this tab focus button right here, which does the same thing. Uh, so let's mouse over it, click it, and then press the button on your MIDI controller uh, that you want to assign it to. Now this will toggle between the crate area and the track, list track listing area like so. And then you use the same knob uh, to scroll between both the uh, track listing and the crate area. Uh, so you don't have to assign different knobs or anything, you use the same knob. Uh, next is add to prepare. Uh, that just adds the currently highlighted track to the uh, prepare area over here. Let me just exit out of it quickly. Go into the prepare area. And so let's uh, let's uh, try and find a track over here. Okay, and then we'll click this button right there. And there you go. That will add it to the prepare area for you. Uh, next is the undo load. If you accidentally load a track, uh, you can MIDI assign this to uh, basically unload the track from the deck. So let's... Uh, uh, let's uh, I don't know. Let's load this track right here, and then bam! Just hit the button, and that will unload the track from the deck for you. In case you accidentally load the wrong track. Now the up, down, left, and right. Uh, these are buttons that you're going to want to assign. Now they're basically for navigating your library, also. Uh, but instead of using the knob, you can use buttons in case your controller doesn't have knobs. Let me just go ahead and assign them all, and then I'll explain what they do. Uh, so up, uh, basically like it says, that'll just scroll up one track at a time. Down will scroll uh, one track at a time. Or if you hold the button down on your controller, that will scroll a little bit faster. Uh, so if you don't have any knobs on your MIDI controller, you can still uh, navigate through your library uh, using the buttons with the up and down. Now, left and right, if you have a lot of columns showing, uh, like you do over here, uh, basically left and right just does that. That just scrolls left and right in the crate area, or excuse me, in the track listing area. However, if you are in the crate area, and as you can see, this crate, if you can see the triangle right here, that means that, um, well, let me get out of the MIDI panel, it has subcrates in it. Now, the left and right uh, MIDI commands will also collapse and expand um, any crate that has any subcrates in it. So, uh, when you're scrolling, uh, you know, you can uh, just hit the right key, I believe. Let's open the panel so I can see which key does exactly. Uh, left, yes, left will collapse it, right will expand it, as you can see as I'm highlighting it. Uh, the buttons highlight when I press them. So, if you're in the crate area, left and right will collapse and expand any crates that have subcrates. Or if you're in the track listing area, that just scrolls left or right in the track listing area. And that is basically it for the uh, library navigation controls. Let's move over to the deck controls. And since they're the same on both sides, I don't have to go through it twice, so uh, we'll just do it on the left deck. Uh, set temporary cue point. Uh, in addition to these five cue points that uh, everyone should be accustomed with, you also have a kind of a, a, a temporary cue point, which kind of acts like the cue on a, on a CDJ, if you ever used a Pioneer CDJ. Uh, now, if you don't have a temporary cue point set, it defaults to the beginning of the track, which I like to use anyways. So I usually don't set a temporary cue point, I just leave it as the default. Uh, so that's a good way to uh, restart to the beginning of the track. Uh, so let's uh, load a track first of all. Oh, I don't know, let's just load this guy right here. 
Okay, so we'll just map it anyways. Let me shift to a different MIDI layer first, though, on my controller. All right, set temporary cube. We'll assign it to this one, temporary cube point. Again, I'm just going to go ahead and assign all these quickly, and then I'll explain what each one does. Although they should be, uh, you know, pretty obvious what they each do. All right, so set temporary cue point. If you have the track loaded, uh, again, uh, let's close out of the panel first of all. Get the track playing. Again, a temporary cue point is kind of like a CDJ style cue point. So let's say we want to set a temporary cue point right there. You just set your temporary cue point button, and you'll see um, it sets a kind of a white marker right there. And that is basically your temporary cue point. So then, uh, if you if you have it paused in internal mode or in relative mode, you know this will play the track as long as you're holding the button down on your MIDI controller. And when you let go, it will jump back to the cue point and stop playback. All right, so that is the temporary cue point. Now again, as I mentioned, if you don't have a temporary cue point set, it defaults to the beginning of the track. Uh, but since I've already uh, set it, I will go to that cue point. Now set cue. Uh, that basically just sets a new cue point in the uh, the normal regular cue points 1 through 5 at the current playhead position. So let's play the track. And if you just press the button, that will add a new cue point in the order in the next available empty cue slot. So that's just a handy way just to add a cue point to the next available slot. Instead of using, you know, control plus 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 or whatever, uh, it's just another way to add a cue point. All right, and finally, let's uh, go back in here. Load deck. Obviously, that's uh, how you load a song in the track listing area to the deck. Uh, so again, if we map that, uh, map that to button, and hit the load deck button, that will change the song in the left deck. I'll load it. So again, fairly obvious what the load deck uh, button does. Finally, instant double. Now, instant double, if you don't know, that uh, lines up the track plane on one deck to the other deck. However, uh, they're kind of it's kind of backwards. Um, it's so the instant double button on the left deck is not going to instant double the track plane on the left deck to the right deck. It actually uh, doubles the track plane on the right deck to the left deck. So uh, it goes from the right deck to the left deck, not the left deck to the right deck. And that will be the same thing for the right side deck. So it's kind of backwards to what you might think. So uh, I'll better just demonstrate it real quick. So uh, we've got a track plane on the left deck. Let's just load one up to the left deck. All right. Okay. I'm going to get out of Medi and go into the panel. Now I'm going to hit the instant double button. Now you're going to notice the track playing on the right side, which is the Samuel L. Sessions track, is going to get instant double to the left deck. And that's going to be using this button down here, the left deck's instant double button. Okay, so as you can see, it instant doubled from the right deck to the left deck, not the left deck to the right deck. So if you want to instant double from the left deck to the right deck, you actually have to assign the right side instant double button to a controller. So it's kind of, you know... Kind of a little backwards, I think, but uh, if you think about it, it makes sense. Uh, just at first, it might seem backwards. All right. Let's eject, let's eject these tracks from the decks, too. All right, so moving on now, uh, we have the auto loop select, the auto loop button, and the loop roll button, and the fine pitch adjust. Uh, the fine pitch, uh, this is basically for internal mode only. This best works with a slider or a fader, and this differs from this uh, pitch slider over here. This is the uh, coarse, I guess, pitch slider, if you want to call it. This is the fine one. This one only does plus or minus 2%, uh, so let's just click it, and we'll map it. And as you can see, it moves the main fader too, but you can see it only moves a very small range. And let me load a track, and uh, I'll show you it only does plus or minus 2%. So I'm at 1% right here, and all the way down, uh, it goes to basically minus 1%. So basically you have a range of 2% with the fine pitch slider, so that's good. Uh, you know, if you play a lot of house and techno, they're pretty similar BPM, so you might not need a whole 16% pitch range. So you might want to use the uh, fine pitch slider or have 
two sliders for, for each side, one for the fine pitch and one for the main uh, coarse pitch adjust. Back into the panel now, auto loop select. This is how you scroll through the auto length loops up here at the knob. So we're going to sign that. We're going to sign it to a knob on uh, my mini controller like this. Okay, I'm using an absolute knob for this one. And as you can see, it will toggle uh, over here between all the auto loop lengths right there. So you can select uh, any beat amount right like that. Okay, now to engage the auto loop, you want to map this button right here. Now let me switch to another layer. So we'll sign that for auto loop, and we'll just go ahead and sign the next one for loop roll. Now again, the difference between the regular auto loops and the loop rolls is the regular auto loop is just the regular auto loop. Uh, the loop roll, however, will jump back into the track where it should be have you not done the auto loop roll in the first place. So kind of it'll jump back ahead into the track uh, to where the track should be if you didn't loop it up. And let's uh, exit out here real quick. I'll jump ahead in the track. Back in the panel. So again, we're going to use the knob to scroll through the auto loop links over here, as you can see. And if I'm on, let's say, one half, and I hit the auto loop button, it'll do an auto loop of that length. And you can also adjust the loop length amount with the knob while you're inside the loop, like so. Okay. Now, however, if you hit the auto loop button instead, that will do a loop roll. And watch, you will notice the track jumps back ahead into the track where it should have been. So again, you can use a combination of the knob to scroll through the auto loop blanks. Again, you can roll with the knob while you're holding the button down to do the loop. Okay, and that's pretty much it. So this is everything in the show MIDI panel area. Uh, library section is mainly for scrolling and navigating through your crates and track listing, and then you have your deck controls on each side. Again, I'm not going to go through the right side because it's since it's the same as the left side. So uh, there you go. This is everything in the show MIDI panel area in Scratch Live.